Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan. He's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And we're going to continue our discussion today about what to do about fleas and ticks. And we're going to look at some of the topicals that you can use and some of the disadvantages and the comparison between them. Um, so around 2014, there were several studies that came out and articles reporting that a lot of these topicals are risky for pets and children. And um, they reported, let's see, the Pest Management Regulatory Agency Health Canada received 4,726 incident reports for cats and dogs related to treatments topically between 2009 and 13. Um, and they receive reports about incidences also used in the United States, uh, but 62% of the ones I reported, almost 5,000, were from Canada. The deaths included 1,188 cats and 872 dogs, mostly in the United States. So um, one of the things that they also looked at in this particular study, um, that when you put the top topicals on your pets, your kids are in contact with them. You are in contact with them. Your kid is little. Your kid might weigh 50 pounds, 20 pounds, 80 pounds, but that is a lot of pesticide to be getting on your children. And importantly, and we'll discuss this more in a minute, some of these are highly toxic to cats. You cannot use what you have for your dog on your cat, no matter what. So, um, <clears throat> One of the things that is uh, in particular concern is permethrin um, because this is highly toxic to cats. And people do not understand that cats are not just small dogs. Cats are different in every way from a dog in terms of their symptoms and allergies and reactions to pesticides and toxins. Um, they're smaller, their metabolism is different, there's a huge and of course, we already know too, many of us might even have a breed of dog, um, like Collies, for instance, are um, unable to take certain medications, uh, have different anesthesia reactions. So we all know stuff specific to our breeds, but dogs are not cats and cats are not dogs. Um, toxicity to a cat exposed to a dog flea and tick product is a medical emergency. Um, and the longer, one of the symptoms is uncontrollable shaking in the cat, and the longer your cat is left to shake, the greater the chance of permanent damage, including death. So if you have cats in your house, you're not gonna wanna use one of these products that we're talking about in a minute. And in fact, I see cats in my office, which is also a room where Tristan goes, and I would not be able to see cats if I was using this product on my dog. I would not feel comfortable with that. Um, and people feel like there are a lot of risks exposing uh, kids to these topicals as well, in particular flea collars as well. Um, when you use a collar or a topical, you're putting a toxic substance on your pet's fur. It can get into your bedding if you sleep with your pet or your kid sleeps with your pet. It can get on kids' hands. It can get all over the house. Um, for instance, if your kid pets your dog and then is climbing along, you know, holding the top of the kitchen counter while you're making cookies, those toxins could be going in the cookies. And one of the researchers said that she found much higher levels of exposure in humans than what they had expected, um, especially small children who can absorb the chemicals through their skins or put their hands in their mouth. Um, and flea collars in particular may be linked to behavioral problems, cognitive delay, and problems in motor development. So if I have a small child in my home, I do not want to risk any of these problems. So be sure to not use a topical um, if you have kids in the house. And as we saw with some of the oral medications as well, that, you know, the little pills that you give your dog in a little brown meaty thing, um, a lot of those can come out through the pet's skin and fur as well. So uh, if you have kids in the house, get cedar side. I cannot say it often enough. Um, there are other ways to control fleas and ticks, uh, washing your pet, washing the pet's bedding, uh, minimizing exposure to places where they can get these things. All of those are good options besides putting topicals on your pet. 
So we're going to look now at a little comparison between Advantage 2, Advantix, and um, Frontline. And we might talk more about Frontline in a whole separate episode because a lot of us used it for a lot of years and it doesn't seem to be working. So um, all three, Advantage, Frontline, and Advantix, um, are supposed to kill fleas. Um, Advantage 2 and Frontline do not repel. Advantix does repel fleas. Um, kills flea eggs and larvae, all of them do that. Kills ticks. Frontline kills ticks. Advantix kills ticks. But the one I use, Advantage 2, does not kill ticks. Um, the only one that repels ticks is Advantix. Kills mosquitoes. Why do we care about that? Not because our dogs are itching, but because of heartworm carried by mosquitoes. The only one that kills mosquitoes or two is Frontline and Advantix. Kills lice and biting flies. All of them kill lice. The only one that kills flies is Advantix. Time to work. Um, they are all working within 12 hours. Advantage 2 works as early as 4 hours. Here's the important thing. What is the active ingredients? Pyroproxyphen and imidacloprid is in Advantage 2. Methoprene and fipronil are in uh, Frontline. And here's the critical thing. Pyroc uh, Pyroproxyphen and amiclopride are both in Advantix, same ones as in Advantage 2, but permethrin, which is toxic to cats, highly toxic to cats, is in Advantix. So if you're listening to this list going, oh, I'll get Advantix, it kills everything. It'll kill your cat too. So do not, if your dog is exposed to any cats, do not use Advantix. Um, you have to reapply every 30 days. Advantix, which has three chemicals in it, is more expensive than the others. And let's look at some of these closer. Um, the pimethrin is a big problem with cats. That's in Advantix. I can't say that enough. Advantix, no cats. No cats near it. No cats in the house. Dog can't be with cats. Um, cats cannot, and it can quickly poison them. And really important to not share your dog and cat medications across dogs and cats. Um, if you have a cat in your home, I would not use Advantix at all. And there's lots of information online about toxicity from it. With Advantage 2 and Frontline, uh, your bug has to actually make it onto your dog. There has to be physical contact and sometimes biting before the medicine works. Um, Never being bitten by these things is a protection against heartworm, Lyme disease, West Nile virus, and a whole lot of other things. So there may be some advantages to using Advantix because it does repel as well as kill these things. But if it's toxic enough to kill a cat, do you want that in a house with children? Do I want that on my dog who's sleeping on my bed that I might kiss on top of his head? A little more on that in a minute. So... You apply these things once a month. Now, Advantage 2, this is what I use. Here it is, Advantage 2. And this is for 11 to 20 pounds. Sometimes my boy goes up over 20 pounds, maybe to 21. He's generally 18 pounds. This is another trick with using this. I get one that's as close to the size of my actual dog because the next size up goes 20 to 40 pounds. Do I want him to have a dose double his size. No, I'd rather have him be a little skimpy. So what do I use this for? I use it twice a year. Once in July before I go to the beach and again in August so that he's covered over Labor Day. Um, this is a very serious situation with fleas down on Cape Cod, especially at the beach. Other people have stayed in the rooms I'm using. Their dogs may have fleas. Uh, more than once in a bunch of hotels, I have woken up in the middle of the night with my arm hanging out of bed, itching, and I think, oh my God, bed bugs, but it's fleas. Um, and more than once, I have had cedar on my dog and had um, 
them be fine. No fleas on them, but fleas on my ankles and fleas on my hands. And I've been lucky that I've had the cedar side with me to spray around the room that minimizes the damage. But I cannot afford to bring fleas into my home because it will affect my work because I see other animals here. And as we all know, getting rid of fleas is a big nightmare. And I might even do a show on that if I make a note here. Flea control. <laughs> um, so my sister recommended that I use this Advantage 2 advantage too to get rid of the fleas before I get them when I'm away and I only need to use the two doses um, anybody who has cats in their house you will probably have fleas especially if your cat goes outside so you may need to use this product just for the potential to get rid of the fleas and make sure you use the cat products for your cats um, flea infestation uh, is not a good thing to have um, and there are, there's something that you can use just to kill the fleas that are existing on your dog. It's a pill that works for about, I don't know, 24 to 36 hours, I think. Um, but it's expensive, it's toxic, you have to go to the vet to get it. It's not a good option. It is not actually a flea control measure. So using Advantage 2 can be helpful for the flea situation. Um, so they're both, both Advantage and 2 and Advantix are great against fleas, but there's a lot of uh, differences. The Advantix kills and repels ticks, mosquitoes, and all those things, whereas Advantage doesn't really do anything to ticks and mosquitoes. Um, so you cannot use Advantage 2 for ticks. That's why I use the cedar side. <laughs> <laughs> and in an area in the south where you have um, heartworm and tapeworms and Lyme disease, the Advantix can be really useful. But again, not if you have a cat, because that's a big problem for the cats. And I think we'll talk more about Frontline another time. I have found this to be really effective for the fleas. I have not had fleas in three years since I've been doing this protocol where I use it before I go down in July and then again before I go back for Labor Day. No fleas. Prior to that, this little young man is very tasty to fleas. They really like him for some reason. And maybe it was because Comet had cedar on him and he doesn't go out that much, but one year, many years ago, he was, uh, Comet had DM. He couldn't walk. He could get carried around. And uh, I had the two kids, him and Comet, down on the Cape and the fleas in the bedroom were terrible. I don't think they could clean under the bed. It went pretty close to the floor. It was wedged in a spot. There was no way to get under there. And again, I had my arm out over the side of the bed at night and uh, fleas were jumping on me. So he was in the bedroom with me, but on the bed and Comet was out in the other room, but you know, fleas are everywhere. So this young man got lots of fleas. It was a big problem. My sister had to like, space mail me some advantage too before I came home to kill them <laughs> and uh, Comet never had any on him never had a flea even though they were all over the place biting me and my dog so advantage two is really good for the flea situation and that is the only reason I use it um, the cedar side works for everything else that the advantix works on and it doesn't kill your cat I don't think you can spray cedar side directly on a cat. You might have to uh, talk to some cat people more about that. Um, and as with any treatments, there are some dogs who have a bad reaction to all of these. Um, you have to read the side effects and the risks on the box. Um, it says hazardous to domestic animals, external use only. So, you know, you're putting it along the top of your dog. So usually they can't reach there to lick. Um, a cat could, and it says right on the box for Advantage 2, do not put on a cat. Don't use it on puppies. Don't use it on an animal that's debilitated, old, pregnant, nursing. Um, individual sensitivities may um, preclude using a pesticide product on a dog. And let's see, harmful if swallowed, can cause eye irritation. Avoid contact with eyes or clothing. Wash hands thoroughly with soap and water after handling. So side effects. Um, monitor your dog. Side effects include, though rare, skin irritation, redness, scratching, discomfort, GI signals, vomiting, diarrhea, um, lethargy can also occur. And of course, these things all work by toxifying the nervous system of the parasite. 
Boy, knowing what I know as a craniosacral therapist, I do not want any toxins near my nervous system, especially if they are toxic to nervous systems. So I would not um, choose to put something as toxic as any of these right down the middle of my dog's spine, which is right over his central nervous system, if I didn't have to. Um, and like I said, the flea situation is so bad that twice a year we do this and it's a big deal. Um, I put it on Tristan, I take him for a long walk to get it distributed through his fur. I do it right before I go to the beach or even at the beach before we go in the room. Like I get out of the car, put it on him, take him for a walk before I even check into my room so that he doesn't have it on him um, as little as possible. I want him to be as free of this stuff as possible. So keep an eye on your dog when you use this and, you know, don't, uh, don't write off something happening to it being hot or him being old or he had too much playing yesterday because all of these side effects can lead up to bigger problems. So um, use these all with caution. So an interesting thing happened with my young man. I sprayed him up with the cedar side. I had to walk up the hill to take a picture of this little house that a guy made out of a tree stump because I want to do that with my fallen tree. And that's the same road where we went when Tristan had a whole bunch of fleas on him from playing with his buddy Gus. So I walked up the hill and he was sprayed with the cedar side, but I just sprayed him like from here down and then kind of brushed it through his coat. Uh, sprayed under the ears, not a good idea. <laughs> so I come home and I find not a tick on my dog, but a tick crawling around on me. And then this morning, I was petting him on the top of his head, right on his little fairy kiss spot where I also kiss him. Did not put the cedar there because, you know, I want to kiss my dog. I don't want to taste the cedar. Oh, dumb me. He had one tick on him right there. And it was dying because it had walked through cedar from the bottom up. Um, so make sure you get the cedar side all over every inch of your dog because the ticks will try to get to a place where there isn't any. Uh, don't forget the fuzz buns on your corgis <laughs> and your aussies and your fluffies on the legs of your uh, golden retrievers etc so that's a little look at advantix a little bit about frontline and advantage two no advantix for cats sounds great does a lot of stuff costs a lot but will kill your kitty or your neighbor's kitty um, or your visiting kitties so do not use advantix anywhere near a cat i for instance travel down to visit my sister frequently um, the dogs are all running around in a big herd, seven, eight, nine, ten of them, and four or five cats. And I could not bring my dog into her house if I used Advantix on my dog. I don't even think my sister sells that in her office because you cannot underestimate um, what people might do thinking they're smart. So uh, putting Advantix on a cat would kill the cat and um, a person could come into the vet's office and be all cranky saying you sold this to me and you know god forbid we point out that you're stupid for putting a dog product on your cat or even putting it on your dog and then not reminding us that you have a cat in your house so i don't even think my sister sells it but advantage two is what i use <laughs> only for fleas only at the beach where there's a bazillion fleas around my neighborhood not very fleasy um, and i have a friend who has very sick dogs and she cannot use anything on them for the fleas. And I don't know exactly where the flea situation started, but for five or six years now, all she can do to maintain a level of flea repellent in her house is to flea comb her dogs. She has chihuahuas and a big furry dog, very furry, like a corgi fur. Um, and the chihuahuas, sure, you might be able to flea comb them, although one is black, he's old now, so he's mostly gray. But, you know, the tick you, or the flea you find on your flea comb may have left eggs all over your dog and the flea comb is not going to get the eggs. She is so nervous. Her dogs are so sick with so many complications, heart disease, missing a kidney, liver malfunction. They have lasted 16 years owing to her good care with food and uh, nutritional supplements and things like that. So she just lives with a low level of flea. She vacuums. She does the borax in the house a couple of times a year and she can't put anything on her dogs. Um, she doesn't, she puts the cedar on the big fluffy one. So that's good. 
but boy, I don't even want to take Tristan in her car if we go somewhere together because her dogs have been in the car and God knows what kind of flea situation is going on in there. So avoid the fleas if you can um, rather than put stuff on your dog. Um, of course, he's usually covered with cedar. I'm still nervous. Fleas are such a problem and I've had a few big issues with fleas in my life. Not in this house, but I had a dog come in at my old house and I had carpet outside of the kitchen. The kitchen was hardwood and that went into the dining room. It was all big square and then you walked into the living room which had white Berber carpet with swirlies in it. And thank God, I had had a human client that day. I didn't usually do this, but I pulled the sheet off and I said, we'll just put the dog on that because it was a new dog. And I, I, like I said, I don't usually do it. So the client came in with the dog, the old tottering and little fluffy like shepherd collie mix dog lays down and I think it was a light green sheet I had on the floor and I could see the fleas all over the sheet <laughs> and running up my hands and this poor dog was so debilitated and the person was really upset about it they didn't know they felt bad well I got the cedar side sprayed 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 because I didn't want to send her back out and I wanted to kill the fleas before the dog moved and did his session and uh, she went home and treated him with advantage two to kill the fleas two or three treatments over 30 days each um, to get rid of them so that's really after that dog was there um, I did a pretty good job of cleaning up I sprayed I put the sheet right in the wash but between the kitchen door and the middle of the living room which was probably it was a big room it was probably 40 feet some fleas must have fallen off of that dog and I had an outbreak and boy I had to put borax everywhere, vacuum, 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 treat my dogs. It was a mess and I couldn't go anywhere because I was worried about my dogs and I had to see my clients out in the yard and things because I couldn't bring them in the house until I got the thing managed. So my human clients were fine. Anyway, so don't get fleas and avoid places where there are fleas, but you know, I'm not going to give up my beach vacation. So I'll just use Advantage 2 twice a year. So this has been a little look at some of the topical flea and tick repellents um, that you might try for your dog. Advanced ticks, remember, do not use on cats, do not use near cats, do not put on your dog if you have a cat in the house. And if your cat is shaking and may have been exposed to like a neighbor dog, get the cat to the vet ASAP. All right, that's been a look at some of these topicals. We will be back tomorrow for a Mother's Day edition of Conversations with a Corgi at our regular Sunday time of 9.30. And let's see. Why don't I use diatomaceous earth? I do use diatomaceous earth. But the fleas on the cape are so bad, I need more than that. And by the way, if anybody has a horse, diatomaceous earth is a good thing to feed them in the summer to keep the flies and the mosquitoes off of them. Thanks for the comment. That was good information. And I think the radio show will be up. Um, we're going to try to record it today. So within two weeks, um, you will be able to hear that. And I have a whole bunch of different guests um, in different areas than where my sister has done the show. We're going to look at a lot of horse-related things and um, some more of the more esoteric um, <laughs> things related to animals and animal care and wellness. So thanks for joining us today. We will be back tomorrow. Everybody have a great day.